Hello and good evening. My name is Fantasisi and this is another episode of Sip and Chat. With me today, I have one of the most incredibly talented people this country has ever, ever, ever produced. And I'm very happy to introduce her, not only as an actor, a brilliant actor, um, a, a radio presenter, an activist, but also someone that is uh, my friend, my sister, someone very dear to me. And you know, we'll get into everything she's done. But for right now, please put your hands together for the one and only, Maria Makoli. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Fanta. I am so excited and happy to be here. And I'm so proud of you. you. The show is doing so well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm very proud. I'm very happy that you're here, obviously. Um, I'm happy to have you on Sip and Chat. <laughs> and, um, you know, the table looks really nice. The oh, setup yes. is nice. Beautiful. This setup is done by Endo Events, so you should probably check them out on Instagram. Yes. They're doing really well. I love this. Right? Yeah. It's very, it suits My the type vibe. of vibe. I know. <laughs> I was like, this girl, I have to wow her on the set. <laughs> so we have love Endo it. Events that just fixed this up for us. So thank you very much, Endo Events. Mm -hmm. And we're at Kalimba. Kalimba Beach Resort is such a beautiful hotel. Yes. You know, they provided us with the space. And you know, the little cocktails. Oh, this is so good, guys. It is. It's it's oh a my god! Mojito and it is mm. so, you know. Oh my god! Yeah. I love it. It's sip and chat, you know. So <laughs> I mean, I'm just happy that they're providing us with all these like cocktails. Uh, but anyway, enough of food and enjoyment. Um, back to the real deal. Mariama is on the sip and chat. This is the first time, and you know she's she's like me. You know we. We always interview people, but nobody really interviews us. So I was very happy. To, I called her. I was like, you know why I'm calling you, right? And she just started laughing because she knew why I was calling her. Yeah. So it's good to actually interview her because she's always interviewing people because she has her own platform mm. where she does the Let, Let's Talk show. And it is a mentorship program yes. that does that is doing so well. Mm. You know, the women you empower on that platform, the yeah. women you talk to. Mm. You know, I'm just, I'm just small but mighty. I'm very proud. Um, but just, Thank you, you know, say hello to the to the viewers and just hello viewers um just like Fanta mentioned i'm sure she, she just said it all <laughs> I did, I really did. but i'm really happy to be here i'm an international award-winning actress a radio presenter and an activist and i'm really happy to be on this show to share my little journey i don't really like interviews she knows that <laughs> yep. but um yeah i'm happy to be here <laughs> i'm happy to have you here i'm just I always like to ask this question when yeah. I get my guest. I said, who is Mariama? Mariama is a young, amazing woman. Mm -hmm. You better <laughs> tell them, girl. <laughs> you know, who is so passionate about what she does, mm -hmm. a go-getter. That's true. You know, I am very humble. I love life. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. And I am very passionate about it. I mean, if, if, if people talk to you about me, that's the first thing they would tell you probably, mm -hmm. that she's so passionate about her work and what she does. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. just do it 100%, that is me. If I love something, I go 100%. Go 100%. If that's I don't true. like it, you can automatically tell from yep. the beginning. Mm -hmm. So basically that is just me. I'm a creative and I am so into the art. You know, um, at the beginning of the show, Mariama, the, you know, when she introduced herself, she is an international award-winning actress. That is true. She won the U.S. Hollywood International Golden Film Award yes. um, for Best Upcoming Actress. Yes. She in 2013 she won the African o Oscars. No, I was nominated. Uh, she was nominated. Yeah. One winning. <laughs> You are winner because That's you've true. done something well. That was to my be first international nomination in 2013. Yeah, from the movie from Hand the of movie Fate. Hand of Fate. I yes. remember that. Yes. Um, she's been nominated for the African uh, Oscars in mm. 2013. Mm. Recently, we just celebrated two of her other accomplishments, which yes. was the U.S. Um, international Hollywood Golden Film Award. Yeah, and uh, she won best. the best best coming upcoming actress mm. and long shorts movie. Yeah, in from Romania. Romania. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently, she was part of the 60 most influential media women in Africa, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, this, I told you guys when we started, small but mighty. <laughs> she's done so much, but also she started this at a very, very early age. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to touch on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because you know, Sip and Chat is very informal. Yes. We will definitely talk about your career, but people are interested to know mm -hmm. who's behind this beautiful face. So, yeah. But let's just touch on a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started acting when I was 12. Actually, that's when everything started for me. Okay. 
Um, I w I'm a very shy, quiet person growing up yeah. in a school that was um, a Catholic school. So every year we'll have our Christmas performance before we close school for Christmas. And for some reason, the headmistress at that time, Mrs. Kujabi, just spotted me and decided that I was going to act. And I'm like, lady, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm too shy for this. But then um, she kind of like insists and then I did it. It was horrible. And she's like, you're going to do a lead role next time. And then I'm like, what? It was horrible and she still said that? Yes. Well, I mean, to you, you think it was horrible. Yeah. I'm sure she saw something. That's I'm, I'm she sure pushed. she did. So I did this play called The Girl Who Can't Cook in primary school. And I loved it because I got to understand what acting was really all about. That it was about communication. It was about passing information. And I couldn't cook at that time. So I could mm -hmm. relate with the story that I was acting. <laughs> You know, and after that, I'm like, okay, I think I want to do more of this. Mm -hmm. I joined all the clubs in the school. Nice. PR Health, Lenehan Society, Children Against AIDS, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we started our media tours to um, campaign for Charles Wright mm -hmm. on Become a FMB. And that's when I also started, you know, my media exposure mm -hmm. and activism. Um, being a sole act, um, activist for Charles Wright, that's when I, that's when actually I started, mm -hmm. and um, creating mm -hmm. platforms to educate people on sexual transmitted diseases, including mm -hmm. HIV and AIDS, through um, CAA at that time, Children Against AIDS. So I got involved in a lot of things just to discover myself and mm -hmm. develop my talent that I was passionate about. Mm -hmm. And from there, I started winning a lot of awards uh, from drama competitions that I was partic participating, participating in. in. Nice. You know, YMCA, Great Minas State Theatre as Best Actress. Mm -hmm. And my family is always surprised because they know me as a very quiet, quiet person at home. Yes. <laughs> You know, uh, but it's two different personalities. I mean, that's our work. That when we are true. on stage, when we are before the camera, it's a different, completely different, completely person, different true, thing. You true. know, when I'm in my own zone, that is my own zone. Yes. I'm quiet, okay? <laughs> so don't be surprised if you see me like that. I'm not pretending, that is who I am. True. So that's when the journey actually started, all the way to high school. Mm -hmm. I became the president of the PI Health Club and uh, we went to competitions and be winning. You know, Newsrat. That's mm -hmm. where I went to. <laughs> Did you see her? She's, you know, Newsrat. Yes. Like, yeah, tell us that, you know. Okay. We always win. <laughs> so, um, after high school, I was confused now what career path I was going to choose because mm -hmm. I was stuck between media and performing art. Mm -hmm. And there was no performing arts school at that time. There was no media school at all. At, at, at all. And my dad also was killed at that time. So I was not in, a, I was not in the right state, state. of mind to mm -hmm. really decide to go to university or anything. So I decided to just get a job. Mm -hmm. And then luckily I was hired um, with Harun Adrami where I worked for five years. Mm -hmm. And I worked in almost all his complex, you know, <laughs> Smart spaces, music or mediamatic, paradise, Everything. everywhere. And that exposure really helped me develop myself. But I was like, mm, yeah, it's, not it's not really for me. Yeah, I mean, I was missing you out. Right? You were, yeah. Music yeah. O, where yeah. I was working with, you know, at that time, the top artists, Artist Mandy band. Mori, yeah. Mighty Joe, yeah. T. Smalls and yeah. Ruki, you know, introduced into Gambian music scene in depth. And then, um, you know, in 2013, in between, I was featured on my first movie called The Hand of Fate, where I got nominated for the African Oscar. So after that, I'm like, I think I want to join the Ibunjan Theatre because that was the only space where one can truly be educated somehow, basically, you know, On acting, acting yeah, through Auntie Janet Bajan Young. And I think that was the best decision for mm -hmm. me. I was able to develop myself and from there big things started happening. I was featured on my first international film mm -hmm. which was a Swedish Gambian movie mm -hmm. um, where I acted kind of a minor role but also a great exposure on an international platform, platform in mm -hmm. Sweden. And then um, that's when Bebet came afterwards mm -hmm. and winning awards internationally. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Um, <laughs> You did. You said Mbebet, mm. and I know that with Mbebet, um, you did a lot more than just acting on it. Yes. Can you just tell us that? So that? I I did both production management and acting lead role, which was crazy I because the producer of Mbebet, Osman Jaju, was the one who reached out to me. Oz is a brother way back mm -hmm. when I was in high school. We we'll meet at competitions with yeah. Yidak, and then we end up working at the same space at Mediamatic. Okay. 
So when he had this project, I was away actually, I was on holiday because mm -hmm. we just finished working on Gifts from Babylon yes. where I was also the production manager. Yes, I remember that. So I started this company called Studio 411 with my friend Christopher T. Jan Smith, mm -hmm. um, which is mainly a production management service that we offer and a lot more into productions yeah. as well, films and documentaries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, also was like, I can't get any production manager that I can really rely on, on apart, apart from, from you. you. So you're going to do both. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, bring it on because I love challenges as well. So I took it up. I thought I was going to mess up, but Alhamdulillah, it came out really great. Really and I'm did. so happy that I contributed to the, to the success of Bibit you know, winning awards globally now, uh, becoming a very big movie from the Gambia, Honestly. where, um, you know, it was also a very emotional story. So sometimes I was like all over the place. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I have to connect with my emotions, I'll disconnect with my emotions and then come back again. And then try to reconnect. Oh my God, it was so tough. But at the end of the day, I'm glad that we were able to pull it out. Because that was going to be my next question. Yeah. How you were able to play both. Mm -hmm. Because that must have been very challenging. It was. You know, uh, I, like you said, maybe the role you played there was a very challenging and emotional role. Yes. And you had to be a production manager. And I know the job of a production mm -hmm. manager. You had to make sure everything was in check. In check. And then you <laughs> had to be in check for your role. Of course. So, yeah. that was incredible, Mariama. Thank you. I mean, I had to because... Um, I didn't want to fail myself. I was not even doing it for anybody. I'm like, I decided to take up this challenge. So I'm going to prove that. myself that I, that I need feeling. to deliver in both areas. You know, and I'm a Virgo. So you know the rest of the story. We are kind of like Earth perfectionists. <laughs> She is an earth and she likes, yes, perfection yes. is, yeah. So I, I, I really tried my best in making sure everything was put together, um, both on the acting side and the production management side as well. So a big thank you to Rebel, especially Usman Jaju, you know, for giving me that opportunity. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, you know, the Gambia movie industry is, uh, how is the Gambia movie industry? <laughs> The Gambian movie the industry, yeah, I mean, I don't always like to go like trying to hass everyone, you know, we are trying mm -hmm. compared to a couple of years ago. Right. I mean, I've seen a lot of movies that came out, maybe just one or two things missing because one thing I keep saying is we rush our productions a lot. I've seen movies that are shot within two weeks and then the next day you're telling me it's, it's out, premiering. you're premiering, like, what did you do? How did you do it? When you come to the, sp to the screening, you, you get you disappointed. See it. You see why. Yeah. You see that it was rushed. It was rushed. You, you have a good storyline, probably you have a great crew, great actors, and then you just messed it up by rushing the whole production. Yep. So I think we need to look more into that. Take your time, develop your stories, produce it, and then we can be winning so many movies. If Mbebet okay. is making it out there Honestly. and gifts from Babylon, which Honestly. are all produced here in the Gambia, even Hand of Fate, you know, True. which was done at a time that, you know, equipment was a problem. Mm -hmm. I remember um, State of My Alaji Manka, we, they had to build a drone. Uh, we had to film odd hours all the way in Tintinto. I thought Tintinto was a fairy, fairy yes, tale. <laughs> Somewhere in Gunju or Tanje, I don't know, behind. But that was my first time going that far in mm -hmm. Gambia. And then um, I can never forget Tintinto because it was quite a mysterious name for me. I'm like, yeah. what is Tintinto? Yeah. But I had a great experience working with them for the first time working on a movie that was of that standard, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know. So Ibrahim C said really did great and there's hope for the Gambian movie yes. industry. I think we need to work more together, collaborate. Uh, Rebel did it, they collaborated with STS Pictures, mm -hmm. you know, myself, Studio 411 and came up with a production that is outstanding. It really you know, is. Gifts from Babylon also was the same thing. It they really came here, well. you know, State of Mike, Bass, and the mm -hmm. entire crew, TJ and Smith acted lead role. I was the production manager, manager well. which they also offered for me to act lead role, but I refused. I'm like, no, I'm going to give someone an opportunity to do this. Let yeah. me focus on production on what, management yeah, okay. because that was my first time uh, doing anything of that sort for a movie. I've done production management before though, like for music videos when I was working with me, uh, music or with Mediamatic. But for a movie, that was my first time. So I, I'm, I'm like, let's encourage other actors to come on board. Mm -hmm. Let me observe and see what will happen. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that it went well. 
So there's hope for the Gambian movie, movie industry. We have amazing actors here. Mm -hmm. Yourself, the likes of Monica, we do. you we know, do, do. Um, and the list goes on. Fatu Bojang, you know, um, Shirifo Kanute. Shirifo. You know, all these amazing actors that we, we have. We really do. Yeah. It's, it's, again, I, I think you're right with mm. that. I think um, now to say the equipment, we do have, because... For yeah. me, if you have a really solid story and you have a great cast, collaborations mm. can be made. Yes. If you don't have all the equipment but another company has, mm. collaborations could be made and you take your time to actually do, do a it. solid production yeah. that can sell Gambia like Mebet is doing yeah. and Gifts from Babylon. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we can definitely, if these movies are out there, we can definitely do it. Yeah. It's just a matter of mm -hmm. working with the right crew, having the right story and taking your time mm. to actually produce a quality work. Yeah. That's it. It's funny, when I won these awards, you know how people are, some people approach me and like how did you win these awards i'm like do you think i don't deserve it because go back and watch whatever it is because people are not used to seeing gambians win outside and they're just wondering because the yeah. yeah and because then you have like yeah. we underestimate the kind of talent that we have here i'm not like trying to show off or anything but what no, i'm saying but it is, is the truth we yeah. talk about this amongst ourselves yeah it is and this is sip and chat it's mm. a very free platform yeah where it's a conversation that we bring to mm. the people mm. so it is true you're not you're not hassing anybody yeah L L I'm like, i didn't pay for those awards to be given to me i didn't buy and those people don't even know me mm -hmm. to be honest they just watch, they watch and they then like, they feel they i deserve it yeah. and then there you go so imagine if other actors also have the same opportunity to have that same exposure true, true. we will go a long way we i think we, we are limited yes as other countries like as you we have a lot of nigerian born british yeah. actors in in hollywood that mm. are doing amazingly mm. well um but we'll just cut it right here we'll go for a quick break when we're back more with maria mccully The pride we take in our brand, the work we put into constantly change the landscape and elevate real estate in the Gambia, it's compared to none. From inception, our goal was to add value to the beautiful Gambian landscape. That's why we are proud innovators of community estates. Kololi Sands is an exceptional piece of work, tailored for ultimate convenience and luxury to bring you an element of finesse that is rare, but unique in its own. This is also our pride and joy, and we welcome you to the exclusive beauty right here in Kololi and right here on the waterfront. Kololi Sands, feel the ocean breeze at your doorstep. Welcome back after that break. Um, it's a super chat. I'm with the beautiful, uh, talented Maria Makuli. Um, right before we left, we were just talking about wrapping up on, the, you know, get the Gambia movie industry how, and how we're very talented in this country. And, you know, some of the advice she gave was just, you know, to have producers or um, write, don't rush your production, mm -hmm. take your time, because there's so much talent to be shown. Um, you know, I want to get into you know i like gist <laughs> but um one thing i do know this society gambia is really number one for huh. is once a woman is successful in their own right doing mm. well for themselves and they don't see ah naka mrs mrs so so la modern you know what i mean you know once they don't feel like you're married yeah. there's always a they look at you like Oh, I'm so sorry for her. She's not married. Mm. Like, how do you deal with societal pressure when it comes to marriage? So, luckily, my family doesn't put pressure on me with That's marriage. They, they respect my space. And um, I think only once did one of my family members mention it and they understood, you know, what's happening and they respected that space. So, my mom, on the other hand, I don't think she has ever, maybe jokingly, she'd be like, what them say, Yeah. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But then uh, she has never put pressure on me, actually. She's one of the people who always encourage me. Take your time, don't rush, you know. And, um, you know, all of that. But then, <laughs> outside my family, society, of course, my colleagues, people I work with, sometimes even your workspace, you'll be on air and someone will just randomly call and say, oh, maybe this is why you're not married. And then, you know, start judging you. So it can be a little bit frustrating. For me, I don't allow it to get to me because mm -hmm. you know me, I'm like, 
if you're not even my family in the exactly. first place, you don't so. know me, so I don't really care. But like, don't don't be like, what woman doesn't want to get married? I mean, That's obviously we have the type that, of women who yeah. don't want to get married. There's some women that really don't yeah. want to get married, and but, that's a choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how many marriages did we see happen, mm -hmm. and where did it go? Mm -hmm. You know. So I mean, allow people to take their time and just understand that maybe they're going through some stuff. Personally, maybe we're just not lucky yet to find the right guy who's ready to propose, but we do want to get married. Mm -hmm. I do want to get married. Mm -hmm. I do want to have beautiful kids, inshallah. So uh, just recently, someone was like, there's this lady who's always feeling so sorry for me in a way. <laughs> I'm like, what? anytime she sees me, she's like, Nissan. You're not yet married. They say say angulo. They say I'm angulo kid. So Tay, finally, I'm like, because mm -hmm. man, I'm not as sad as you are. Your home alone, you are. What are you sad about? Mm -hmm. Helping a yakam tipul no. Or yeah, like why are you so sorry? Yeah, why are you so sorry? You get what I mean? Like, look at my ear Exactly. Exactly. You know. Some will go to the extent of telling you maybe you've accomplished a lot. You need to slow it down. Well, that is the easiest and yeah. quickest life. Yeah. So that gori mun la yeme. Like, ban gori mama wara raga. Like, why should you be scared of a woman who is trying? A woman who is to trying to her life, make to her own heart cash, you. you know, and be able to support you. Like, just see it like a support. It's not a competition. But I understand that is the type of society we are also grown in. Our some of our men are too complex. Mm. They're so insecure as well. See, so they I cannot stand now, it. Me and Maria now. They cannot <laughs> stand it. <laughs> That's the honest truth. <laughs> because the, the, this is one of the things that I, I with my friends, like yeah. I have a friend that constantly, every time we have a conversation, we must delve into relationships. Yeah. Because this, the way the society is set up, mm -hmm. if a woman is independent and she wants something to, to make something out of her life, yeah. or maybe you're too independent, or mm -hmm. maybe you're too tough, or maybe you're too yeah. strong. Exactly. Understand mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. it, there's that. There's that also of they always keep forgetting you are actually supposed to turn you your are husband. supposed to I say that all, all the, the time, time. I mean uh, just because danga desperate pull say doesn't mean that any guy who comes your way them. Don't worry them say your mom because honestly I'm the yana go you have the sunyo approach and like God why? Father God, has he gotten to this now? Is this where we are? What it does? Is it on my forehead? What? No, no determination in them. I'm not even saying be rich, bro. I'm not saying that. Have a steady job at least. But no, you don't have a job that you're just that. Yeah. That's not a stable. Like, no offense to the rubber rubber cast. Do you think? Do you mm -hmm. get what I mean? Do you mm -hmm. think? But at least have a stable job. Yeah. Have a stable income coming in. Mm -hmm. I'm got ambition. And be ready to support your partner because for me, actually, maybe my greatest challenge is knowing that I'm going to have a man who will support what I do. Mm -hmm. um, some of the men that I've come across usually would try to get me off what I'm doing mm -hmm. because they're insecure. Oh, you're always working with men. True, the field that I am in is dominated men, by men yeah. and I'm usually around men strictly because of work. It doesn't mean I have anything to do with these people. I've got close friends who are men and I have nothing to do with them. So if you're going to be insecure about my job, at the end of the day, we can't get married because I am not going to be the type who will get married and you tell me to quit my acting. I will quit when I feel like I want to quit. And, um, or, you know, or they you know, always try to, I feel like a lot of men will try to manipulate you with, ah, so we can't get married. Yeah, yeah. You can't get married. Exactly. Like for mm. me, it's like, it's, it's, it cannot be this or that. Yeah. Why can't I have the husband, the career, and yeah. the children? Exactly. You know that, and I think a lot of the men here, unfortunately, sorry, that, mm. you know, we love our Gambian men. <laughs> But the problem the more, if you find a woman that is a career woman and very ambitious, mm. I'm a man that's that's confident and yeah. not insecure mm. and that will support you and stand by you. Exactly. This is where the challenge comes. Yeah. And unfortunately as well, there are a lot of women who've settled. 
Yes. They've settled. Yeah. I had a like must say, had a time and get them. Yeah. And so because they don't have a choice. You know what I mean? Who wanna say I don't feel it? I say I don't know. Time like who wanna yeah. say those say why who wanna say dinga say take mm. neka amna kula yala bila. Mm-hmm. Neka agwa tobla. So for me, mm. societal pressure when it comes to marriage. That's why mm. I don't even like when I ask it obviously because I want the conversation out yeah. there. People to know if if you pass thirty, mm. there is nothing wrong with it. Yeah. One of my favorite aunties got married at 33 or 34. Yep. She's one of the happiest women I know. Yeah. My uncle is the most incredible guy to her. Mm. She's for her she's found the right partner. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. And she found it at 33. Yeah. Now, God forbid it. Hidden how did you say at 27 divorce then? Yeah. And then you say at 25 since say you know Yeah. So for me it's like put put pressure on anybody. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, and I like that you, you said it in that way mm-hmm. because Go that again, you say again to talk about them. No. So when you when you really want a woman that's a career woman, mm-hmm. know these things. Mm-hmm. Women that are hustlers that want to make something out of their lives, mm-hmm. they want a supportive partner. That's all. We only need a supportive partner. <laughs> insecure men, go away. <laughs> if you're insecure, we're not for you. No. No. Sorry. At all. <laughs> but um, I mean, on the topic of men and marriage, what is your ideal man? Ha, I'm not too demanding, you know. Like so me. yeah. <laughs> you just, <said> yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe yes. <laughs> just on. just be a lovey dovey. Like I Aww. I love to be treated like, like a, a princess, like a little baby. Like yeah. Adventure. Just just show me love, show me affection. You know, um show me that you care and you are willing to support me and be by my side. You know, I don't I don't want a partner who is unpredictable today. Mm. You are in the mood to support me tomorrow. You are not in the mood to support me. No, <laughs> at least that consistency needs yeah. to be there. Yeah. You know, um, yes, just, just, just be the type who I can vibe with mm-hmm. and click with. We both have that understanding mm-hmm. and get to respect each other in mm-hmm. all aspects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the respect is also important. It's very, very important. If you have a partner who is about to respect you for who you are, you got it. You got it. Yeah. Do you know, Annie, okay, that's amazing. You've just said the qualities you want in mm. him. Do you have a type? What do you mean? I thought that was the same. <laughs> does he have, you know, when I, like, does he have to be tall? Does he have dark skin? Ah, skin? that. Are you, what are you attracted to most? What is the first thing you notice about a guy? When they smell good. Ooh! Yes. <laughs> I don't care about the height. No, I care about the oh. height. I don't need someone that I'm short to. And Mariama is a petite woman. So, yes. I mean, so easy. Put suit kodo, so you're fine. <laughs> yeah, when they smell nice, they look good. You know, take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Don't look like a bushman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Because some girls, is the smile. Some yeah. some girls, is like, oh, I want, uh, you know, what they see maybe is, oh, I like his beard. So yeah. I like that for you is the smell. Because that's very important. I like it's one important. of those for me too is yes. one of those. Um, so is there a special somebody in your life? No, I don't want to talk no. about that. I'm <laughs> sorry. There's, I feel like there's something you don't even want to share with us. I don't want to talk about I that. Know. Okay. Anyway, you know, we want to... Let's just to- leave it where it is. <laughs> you know, in the suspense with everyone. You know, I like that though. I, yeah. I think privacy is the best way, especially in this country. Mm. If something is not private, I'm sorry for you. No. Mm? We see One, it. two, three. It's you will see exes from 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, you know, on the show, I really like to touch on mental health yes. because, and this is something we do talk about you and I, mm. um, because it's important to me, it's important to you, and we we both have experiences yeah. with it. What, what's your take on mental health, especially in the mm. way that it is such taboo in mm-hmm. our society? So I've learned about or experienced mental health at a very early age because I've been exposed to public, to several platforms at a very early age, as early as 12. I've been on big platforms performing before vice presidents and stuff like that. So um, I've seen young people deal with mental health on a different level that I was not really sure of what, what it is yeah. because of the way society made us think of it either or they just being moody for no reason mm-hmm. so it took me a while to really understand until I, I got a very um, close friend of mine who um, was really dealing with depression and I had to be there for that person to support that person mm-hmm. in a very 
deep connection mm -hmm. and um, I in between also kind of lost my <laughs> mental Yourself balance as well yeah uh, it's, because it's it was too demanding much and yeah draining, I understand and I've always been around people who also just surely depends on me because mm. I seem to be the one probably that they can really rely talk on or, rely or talk on. to mm -hmm. you know and Personally, for me, I've been very protective of my mental sanity because that is all we have. And I don't allow anyone or anything to mess with that. I've been for the past few years walking around it. And it, I think the only time it really got me hit was the beginning of COVID-19. Mm. When I had to slow down with work, slow down with my life for the first time, mm -hmm. which I hardly do because I'm, I'm always working. Mm -hmm around the clock, even on weekends sometimes, I would take contracts mm -hmm. because I just want to keep myself going. Mm -hmm. Because of um, the trauma that I had also gone through losing my dad who was killed when I was just in primary school. And we know how our society is. When when something happens to you, the way society sympathizes with you, is mm. it's so hot. Mm. Uh, for them, they're showing love, but mm -hmm. on that individual who is a victim, it's it's so painful mm -hmm. you know walking around people pointing fingers I kill and rape or yeah, you sorry. know you say so, killed sorry yeah. I, I didn't mean to cut you but you said killed I just want us to just visit that a little bit before mm. moving on um, how how was yeah, your so dad my, my dad was never around he was away when he came back uh, my dad was actually a driver and then um, you know he got hit by Jack on his head um, oh. by some guy and then he died on the sport so the morning that happened, I was supposed to go to school. I was uh, in grade nine. Mm -hmm. We're just getting ready for our grade nine exams. And he just came back home. We, were just, we just started reconnecting, you oh. know? So it, was at a, it happened at a time that it was too sensitive for us. Because I was just getting to know my dad, dad. in depth, mm -hmm. you know, getting connected with my other siblings. Mm -hmm. And then um, my grandmother was like, oh, you can't go to school today. And I'm like, why not? Because mm -hmm. I'm always ready to go to school, school for mm -hmm. some reason. Because I'm, I'm anti-school. I'm mm -hmm. in every club. Mm -hmm. So I hardly miss school. And, um, you know, when she break the news to me. And that day, my mom came over to sleep with me for some weird reason. We slept on the same bed. And mm -hmm. early in the morning, she just went. I didn't know where she went to. So this was really hard for me. And um, I'm still going through that. I know. And for me, work mm -hmm. is what kind of like distracts me from memories not really the memories but distracts me from all that emotions that I probably have to go through or when I have a script and I'm getting ready for a production either at the theater or a movie it helps me keep me alive mm -hmm. basically work keeps me going so when COVID-19 hit mm -hmm. I just had to really um, slow down and it was very tough for me I didn't know what to do you wake mm -hmm. up in the morning you're at home yep. you know and I was getting stressed out about that because I wanted to do something. I wanted to go back to my normal schedule. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of healed from it and um, get over it. And it was not easy. That's when I knew really mental, mental health, health was real. real. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think with COVID uh, as well, mm -hmm. like you said, if you're someone that really just it's on the go every time yeah. and you just had to be put in one spot it would be really heavy of on course. you because imagine now you know you have things to do but you're like I don't have time because yeah. you genuinely don't have time yeah. so you don't really deal with those emotions mm -hmm. but then because now you have all the time in the world yeah. everything will resurface back up mm -hmm. um, but how do you help yourself when you're in that space how did you help yourself mm -hmm. you know when COVID just hit mm -hmm. you said that's when you really experienced mental health yeah. like some of mm -hmm. some part of it or some form of it what did you do to help yourself so I started reaching out for help, which I hardly do. Yep. I'm horrible at that. I, I am horrible at asking for help. Mm -hmm. um, I always try to figure out to do things for myself. This can be financial, emotional, um, all the way around. It's not because I'm too full of myself or whatsoever. It's just I'm not used to asking for help. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I started reaching out for help. Mm. And it was very difficult speaking to some people that are really close to me and dear to me, um, who I also share the same kind of feel with, mm -hmm. just to see um, how they can support and help me. And that was really good. So I'll say if you are out there and you're like me, don't be scared to reach out for help. Uh, don't, be, don't be scared to reach out to people you think would be of great support in what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And I got in, my music zone back again mm -hmm. you know started listening to music 
watching movies more frequently, doing mm -hmm. stuff that I used, used to, to do. do that I didn't yeah. have time for. Yeah. And that was really helpful, mm -hmm. you know, go to the beach, mm -hmm. you know, drive down to the beach and just enjoy that environment and reconnect back uh, at our camp because my mom has a tourism camp at Marakisa, which is beautiful. She still hasn't taken me there, guys. <laughs> you know, I've asked her. I will, I, I will. Asked her. I, said, my mom, I want to go for a weekend. Yes, yes, you still haven't gone. <laughs> I will. Okay. The thing is, my mom is the boss lady, so I don't, I know she's sometimes yeah. very busy, but yeah. I will, I, I promise. Okay. So that's a nice spot to just get away as well. And um, I'm glad that I have that, that to my accessibility. Yeah. And it did help a lot. It did. Yeah. I'm happy. I like one thing she said mm. here. If you're going through something mm -hmm. and you're someone that doesn't ask for help on a regular, mental health is no joke. You definitely need to reach out to someone, talk to someone you trust, open up to someone, let them know. Mm -hmm. Because even if you don't have a therapist at hand, that person listening might do so much for you. Yeah. So please do not joke about your mental health. It is serious. We know what we're talking about. Yeah. It is detrimental if you don't really try to handle it yeah and if people come to you to open up please do not dismiss them because that is the worst thing you could possibly do mm -hmm. to someone like that mm -hmm. we'll go for a short break when we're back more with Miami Gully. Welcome back after that short break. Um, more with Maria Macaulay. You know, we're getting. <laughs> you guys know what's coming, eh? It's the Never Have I Ever segment. <laughs> I'm so excited to bring Maria on this journey. She's like, "What's that? Was that segment?" I'm like, "You would know what the Never Have I Ever segment is." <laughs> but Never Have I Ever segment is this. I'll ask you a couple of questions. If okay. you have done them, oh, I take a sip. That's what this sip and chat. Oh, okay. So you take a sip. So, so if, if I, you haven't done it, no, you haven't. If you, you still want to take a sip, you can take a sip. It's yours. Okay. But if you've done it. Just take a seat. <laughs> I, will, I will drill you a little bit more. But, All right. Um, my first see. never have I ever is this. Mm. Never have I ever lied on a resume to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody behind the camera is telling us they have done it. Yeah. But never have ha The question is, uh -huh. never have I ever lied on a resume to get a job? Mm. No? Yeah. Are you no. Sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Never have I ever kissed more than one person in 24 hours. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that is you kiss Lamin today, right now, before tomorrow. Before 24 hours? You've kissed. Is that a kissing machine? <laughs> I mean, you never know. You never know. No. Okay, and then the third question is, never have I ever mm -hmm. lied to my partner just to go out? Ah. Uh, mm. <laughs> Sip. Let's sip that. What did you lie about? What did you say? <laughs> I want to know. Uh, because it sounds like a really jealous partner. Mm. <laughs> so you had to make an excuse to go Yeah. Out. It's not an excuse. I just feel if I tell this person where I'm going, he's going to start calling me, bothering me. Mm -hmm. Because he's insecure mm -hmm. about it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to my mom. At least that will make you calm down. Calm down. Take no. a photo of them. Faker, maybe, I, it's actually work-related, okay. but maybe he's not comfortable with, 
with me working with that individual because he just can't stand the chemistry for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's still trying to work around trusting that. Yeah. Hey, he's <laughs> secure man. Um, this was not now actually. It's not no, recent. I'm this sure. was some time ago, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never have I ever cheated on a partner. <laughs> <laughs> you? No. It's the fact that I'm gonna look on it. Mariama, the way she looks at me when I ask these questions. And what comes out of her mouth, it's like are you are you giving me or no? You know what I mean? Um so okay. Never have I ever stalked an ex on social media. Do you have Yeah. <laughs> Too bad, I did. <laughs> Who did you stalk? <laughs> Who did you stalk? One of my exes, so mm -hmm. because um, you know just how it is. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't like my relationship out there. So this was, I think. Oh, I feel like I know who this person is. This was like uh, three years ago, I think, when we broke up. So I was told that he was still uploading my photos, and then I was like, "Is he mad or what?" So I had to like really go online to stalk him because I was already done and moving okay. but why are you still uploading my photos making it look like we You're still, still have a thing so when I did that and I found out that because he blocked me but then I was able to find my way to he to blocked you he was really hurt yeah <laughs> but why would you upload my photo so I called him and asked because I'm, I, for some weird reason I have a cool vibe with all my exes <laughs> you know so I'm like why are you uploading my photos bro so it's like, yeah, because I can't get over the fact that we're still over. I'm like, you have to get over it because you have to bring down my photos or else I'm coming to your house and it wouldn't look nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm a cool person, but when we go rebellious, we're truly not nice. She's a Virgo. Yeah, so... If you know about stars, so <laughs> You know, I, I had a talk with him and said, bring it down. Like, it's over, it's over. Just let's move on mm -hmm. and it wasn't my initiative you wanted this over now it's over and you think you can come back try to you know that's the thing men do yeah it's like when they initiate something like a breakup or an argument when something maybe some madness has entered their body yeah and then you guys break up and then they want to crawl back and then they say it's the devil's other, work yes no, you, you are the devil right there <laughs> goodbye don't disturb me goodbye. um final question never have i ever fought a girl over a guy Mm, you never, never. No, I'm gonna be a man like this. Loma Holly, my director. I don't know why he's looking at me because I don't fight. You we don't have to. to fight, exactly. We don't have to, yeah, especially physically. And I would say this to ladies: you don't go after the other lady. Go okay. after the man. For me, I'll, I'll beat the man up any day, any time. We don't Whether I can violence, beat you, you or not, not but we are doing it. <laughs> And you whether you want to it or not, of fire. you have to. Yes. You have to. To be initiate, honest. Initiate that, that trauma between the two of you and leave the girl. <laughs> <We don't laughs> that this is how you know. Mariama is small, but she's very really dangerous. But initiate trauma. Yes. No, Mariama, I don't know. Why but go traumatize another girl? I agree with you. I don't understand why women always go to the other woman. Yeah. Are you my problem? Am I dating you? I'm dating the guy. That's exactly. the one that disrespected me. Yeah. That's the one I'm dealing with. That's when you really know what fire is. When hey, anyway, you know what? <laughs> let's save it. Let's, let's not give it. them let's all not, the. Let's not really show our, you know. Yes. Let's just show. Before they say that is why we yeah, are single. That is, why <laughs> <laughs> that is why we are not married. <laughs> they literally say, "You should leave what a guy says." Say it. Give it to Bobby. You know, no. Sorry, I'm sorry. This is how we are. Unfortunately for some people, yes. but fortunately for us, we're so aware of who we are and yeah. our value, mm. and that is why we're able to pinpoint when stuff goes wrong yeah thank you very much for being thank you chat. this was so much fun was, right? i thought my life was very boring but <laughs> life is not. this was fun thank, thank you, you so much for the thank platform you. Thank and you so much yeah for being good luck with this show it's amazing thank you thank you so very much guys this is all we have for you mariama say bye to the guys and till i come back your way next week this was Sip and Chat with the one and only. I love you all. Thank you for the support all the time. I see the love you all give me all the time when I win awards or when I'm recognized. Mm -hmm. And anytime I reach out to certain people out there, just know that I love you and thank you so much. <laughs> Goodbye. Till we come back your way next week. This was the Sip and Chat show with your one and only Fantasy Peace, love and cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs>